Hey, what's up? Hold on. This episode is brought to you by Spindrift. Not really, but the burps are. We're doubling down on the Digitone today. Check out this video for some sound design tips because I'm gonna show you a jam that I used implementing some of those methods and we're gonna dive into the different patches I've made. We have three synth sounds and a drum track that I'm gonna talk about today. This piece is a work in progress. It's a one pattern jam and I'm really excited about it. It's been a lot of fun. Here we go. So there's a little bit. I really like it. I'm probably going to turn it into a full song. And yeah, the more time I spend with the Digitone, the more I, it's it's perfect. It's so unique. And you know, I gush about the Korg Minilog XD, which I love and I can do exactly what I want with it. But the Digitone is great because I do exactly what I didn't know that I wanted. It always surprises me and not in a way that I'm just like randomly messing with things and getting cool results. Like I'm doing things intentionally and still just getting wildly wonderful results. So yeah, let's just break it down. Here's the you know, the main pattern with this synth. Track one, we have these, these chord stabs, basically. Is this house music? What is the, what is this type of music? I don't know. It's 110 BPM, a little slower than house, maybe. It's like got this like 90s synth pop vibe to it. It's four on the floor. It's got this kind of like bubble gummy, but still like, warm and, and woolly synth sound to it. Anyway, so yeah, here's the rhythm. All of the, the yellow trigs are just parameter lock adjustments. I was playing around with automating the release time and I ended up getting rid of that. And instead of clearing the locks, I just let a cycle play through where I turned the release down. So ignore the yellow. Um, you know, the, the red trigs are where those, those chord stabs are happening in the pattern. And sound design wise, here's the patch. So I'm just playing. or some variation of that rhythm. And to show you what the patch looks like, those are our C, A, and B ratios, and we're on algorithm five. And those are our synth A and B levels. And we have a little bit of detune on all of our algorithms. So you can hear that sort of phasing happening, right? Um, we have a mild LFO on the synth mix and that, al uh, that LFO is, is not turned on at all. So we're not panning through the algorithms, but here's what some of the different algorithms sound like, because one thing I like doing after I have a patch established on the Digitone is scrolling through the algorithms after I've like finished my patch to see if maybe some of the other algorithms or arrangements of the, the ratio sound better. So what we have here is a lot of different overtones happening with algorithm five, right? And if we take a look at the mix, what we've got here is mostly the Y side. So we're hearing a lot of A. We're hearing a lot of synth A here. Whereas on some of the other algorithms, as you can see, we're getting a lot less of synth A coming through because we're geared toward the Y side again. You can see there's a lot of B. You got some of that brightness from A coming through, but um, pay attention to where your mix is, how the ratios are arranged in the algorithm, and how that results, or how those result in your final synth sound. See, there's that A shining through. So we have it tuned to a fifth. We have. It's a, just a chord interval is an octave and a fifth. And for a second pattern, I might do something like a, you know. I 
I don't know, something like that. So that's our chord stab. Our second element that we have is, oh, and I named these as well. Um, this uh, this is supposed to be spark swell because it's like sparkle swell, but I typoed, so it just says spark well, which sounds like some sort of construction product. Um, who knows what it would do, but it would sound like this. It's one trig for the whole four pages. And it is, it's that. We have a LFO being sent to the amplitude volume. So that's without that. And that is uh, fake side chained. So it's pumping uh, to the quarter note along with the kick. Just for reference. We'll come back to the drum track later. The secret sauce to this patch, however, is an LFO being sent to the synth algorithm. The quarter note is our rhythm here. However, we have adjusted the phase to be 33%. So let's listen to the different depths because you can hear it starting to cycle through some of the algorithms and it just catches them very briefly as the waveform goes through. And after a certain point, you just get this sort of fifth interval pitch harmonization. So I just have it around here. So when you have that LFO pumping, you have a cool rhythm happening that interacts with the hi-hat pattern on the drum part by setting that LFO wave to 33% you get it on some different 16th notes. It's not directly on the downbeat. So that's like a fun, it's like a swell and a little sparkle. Hence, sparkle swell or spark well. There's nothing super special going on here, to be honest, in terms of like the actual patching here. Um, we've just got some feedback. Uh, the mix is straight down the middle. Um, so it's a little bit hazy and fuzzy with that feedback. But yeah, the, the intention and the magic in that patch is, is from the LFO, sort of modulating all that stuff we just talked about. Patch number three. This is a really cool one, in my opinion. It's not an arpeggio. So here's what one note sounds like. And what I'm doing with this patch is I'm playing this pattern. Except the notes are being, they're being held onto just long enough for that low note to come in. It's very interesting how this works out. And what I have here doing all the work really is uh, the, the delay on synth page two. So th this is a delay in the mix of ratio A and B. So that low note is coming from two places. It's coming from first the delay of synths A and B. Then we have an LFO being sent to the synth algorithm. So when we turn all that off, that's our synth sound that we have. And I'm going to leave the algorithm off and show you what delaying the synth does. So that low note is synth B, but interestingly, because of the way that the algorithm mixes everything, we also have a pitch shifting happening because of the algorithm. So even though our synth delay is turned off, we're still getting it. So it's kind of coming from two places. And then you can hear what's happening with A. Hopefully you can hear the difference as I turn that up, but it's kind of just like a little bit of a twinkly delay sound. So again, it leans into that 16th note groove on the, the, the drum pattern. But the one is kind of hard to find, right? Until you bring in that main chord step. So the chord stab and the swell really emphasize that four on the floor groove. 
and everything else kind of fills in the space rhythmically and supports that. And we have the drum track too, which I have completely filled up. And this is just uh, basically a trig locked pattern. We have a four on the floor kick, and then I have parameter locked the amplitude uh, and panning for some of the hi-hats, as you can see. At the end of each phrase, I used a couple of different hi-hat sounds, just presets. I didn't really modify them at all, aside from the settings you can see on the screen. I do have to say, the Digitone can do some pretty cool drum sounds. Um, it's not my go-to for drum designing, just because of my personal preference of drum sounds. I'd prefer to work with a sampler, like the Digitac to the Octatrack for my drums, and fine-tune things on those. I'm, I'm more comfortable with that, and I think they're more capable. Again, just for the types of drum sounds I use, but as a placeholder, I think that this is a fine pattern. I'm definitely gonna beef things up with uh, with another Electron sampler, though, and, and continue to work on this song. Definitely go check out that other video, as I mentioned, if you wanna see the process of how I design sounds from scratch. But after I made that video and kind of explored some droney sounds, I wanted to make something a little bit more concise and punchy that still had some fun atmospheric components, right? Like these floaty things. But I started off with this, this chord sound. And that set the whole thing in motion. So yeah, Digitone is the flavor of the month. I really feel like I'm continuing to grow into this and I feel like I'm not putting that much work into it. It's just like, I, I just have to use it. I have to turn it on and good stuff happens every time. My new year's resolution is to play more Digitone and it should be yours too.